In this video, QDR support explains how to install and configure WinCollect 10 using PowerShell. So what I'm going to do now is flip over to another machine that I have here in the lab. Um, this machine here has a couple PowerShell scripts. Now I'll make these PowerShell scripts available for everyone after master skills. They can go in and just use them if they like. Um, but let's just take a quick look at at the two. So I have um, an install agent.ps1 PowerShell script. I have a location of where the file is that I want to use. So I'm going to install this version of WinCollect 10. And I have a couple other machines here in my lab, uh, perf 1501 and perf 1500, that I'm going to use. We don't have WinCollect installed on those machines here right now. Flip back over. So you can make this, you know, a little bit better if you had a group of machines that you want to install the agent on. You can do that in this um, agent update script. Um, I have that being used. So I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. So I have just a, a simple machine here. So I just want to install one machine at a time. Um, basically, what I'm doing below is I'm creating a new PowerShell session to that name. I'm copying over this file from this machine here on my on my lab as well. So it's just a you know normal Windows share. I'm copying it over to the Windows temp directory and then I'm just invoking the command. So I'm going to run the MSI exec.exe file or command and I'm going to specify a few arguments. So the list here. So I'm going to do the installation. This is the, where the file is located and here is the installation method. So I'm using the quick install method. The quick install method I kind of mess or you know alluded to here before was that it's collecting the application system and security event channels on this machine. And you have to specify a destination. So that's the only two things you really need to specify when doing this. So this will get your agent up and running, collecting local events and sending to this destination. So we have that destination. We've been using that before here. So we're going to use that same destination. And then after I just have like a wait here and then it ends the session. So nothing too overly complex here. So if we click play, we got it set to per 1500. I'm just using PowerShell ice here. If we click OK. Oh, and of course, I have to run it as admin. So let's try this again, run as a min. Okay. And let's open up that file. Okay, here we go. For 1500. And let's hit play. Okay, so we, it's going here now. There's a little wait and it just finished. So if we go back over to per 1500, we can see we have the IBM Win collect directory here. And we can see there's a patch folder already created and this agent is up and running. Basically what is happening is that agent's being installed and it's being told to update the basic agent. So the basic agent doesn't have much into it. It's just a clean template, but it's updating it with the, the instructions that I specified at the installation. So if we take a look at that agent config new, we can see here that we got the identifier set of per 1500. It's using that destination called QRadar with the IP address, and it's collecting the three channels um, that I wanted it to collect. So we'll just flip back over to perf 1501 and install that. So we go to C program files. There's nothing there. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that just to clear it up. Okay, go back over here. I got per 1501 set. I click run. Just give it a second to go. Now there's nothing special set up here. Um, this is your typical Windows domain Active Directory. Um, the credentials I'm logged in with is a domain admin user. Um, there's nothing else fancy set up. It's just you know, you got your WinRM session set up, uh, your permissions and firewall settings all configured, and you can easily do this with you know, with your Active Directory domain. So we have WinCollect installed here as well. 
so that was pretty simple you know and there's not much to it it's uh, no needing of to use like SCCM big fix or some other endpoint management system in order to install an agent and get it up and running now if we flip over to the agent update script so here we have a list of computers that I'm using. So I got this variable called computers. And if we go to C PowerShell scripts, what I have here, I also have a directory being used called WC agents. Now inside this WC agents, I have a list of machines and surprise, surprise, it's just 1501 and 1500 here listed. Okay. So what it's doing is it's just calling that list it's getting the list of the agents here below in in here below um, the source again so this source is actually what update script am I going to use so we have um, some you know when you install WinCollect if we go back over to this machine here and if we go to C program files IBM WinCollect and go to the samples we have some samples that we're we're giving everyone to use for you know what we think is the most common kind of um, changes configuration changes that you'll be making to your agent so these update scripts can just be applied to the patches directory so that's all that's happening here behind the scenes so we have this update agent secondary destination um, let's say i don't want to use that one here right now i want to use um this sysmon one so let's use the sysmon add sysmon so i go back over here add sysmon okay so if we take a look into that update script we can see that it is just adding the xpath query to the channel where the sysmon events are being written to it's going to use the windows event collection and it's going to create a source or a name in the in the local sources called sysmon so if we take our powershell script and go a little bit further here i have this variable name called destination yeah it probably should be changed to something like patch directory or something like that just you know not to confuse it with the win collect destination but right now this is the destination of where this update script file is going to be dumped into so this is your default you know location when collect patch now if you had something you know if it was installed somewhere else of course you would have to change it now below is what is actually happening so it's taking the name of the computers it's doing a copy of that file here this add sysmon and placing it in the patch directory so it's taking that list of computers so right now if i go back and take a look here at these direct at the win collect directories for both of these agents i just have the one patch file in here right now if i go back and let's run this script fingers crossed everything goes through here yeah so it was pretty quick now if we go over to these machines you can see right away that one just got it and this one's got it as well now if we take a look into the config folder uh, actually let's go look in the patch folder first so we got the agent config new, the agent config old. You can see it's actually dumped that update agent sysmon file in there. If we take a look at the old agent config, we just have our local sources with the three channels. If we look at the new agent config, we can see here now that we've added that sysmon. So pretty simple, pretty easy, and you can do this, you know, as many agents as you want any remote agents that you have in your you know as long as this machine that source machine where you're running the powershell script has access to those agents you can make changes to your agents you know on the fly without using as i was saying you know you know big fix or sccm or some other endpoint manager to make those changes right now let's let's take it a little bit step further so we have this agent already installed over here but say I want to use it as like a template like i i don't like what i want to do is i it's not something that's available in the in the samples directory so right now i'm going to use the example of adding a secondary destination 
So we will go back over here to this agent that's running. Let's go up into destinations. Now, the secondary destination is is something new that we've added. It's it's available in WinCollect 7 as well. Um, the, the secondary destination is used as a failover. So with the you know the release of Curator with the high availability and disaster synchronization app and stuff like that, we've we've added the ability to have a, a secondary destination set so that if the primary goes down after you know 30 30 minutes, it will fail over to the secondary address. So I have another Curator config here in my lab. And I'm just going to point it to use that 233.104, that IP address, and it will fail over after you know 1800 seconds. I think that's like 30 minutes. Now, what's also going to happen in behind the scenes is that once it fails over to the secondary address, it will be checking every five minutes to see to see if that primary destination is back over or, or, or back up, and it will fail back over to that primary destination. So this, you know, gives you a little peace of mind to make sure that, you know, if you did have one appliance or, you know, go down in your deployment, if you had that secondary address set up, you know, the agent will cache up to six gigs of event data like it did previously in WinCollect 7. So that's still all there. But instead of like having that stuff saved on disk, you can have it pushed over to your, um, your secondary address, your secondary device as a failover if you configure it. So now that we've just, you know, all we have to do here is just put um, the IP or the host name of that secondary address. And then we're just going to go down here and click Save. So we have new pending changes to be applied. So we can see here that we've added that secondary set of 233.104. And we're going to apply the changes. So now that we have the, the changes applied, we're going to go over to that. C program files, IBM, WinCollect patch directory. So the last pack or the patch directory we just added. We can see if we take a look that here we go. We've added a new destination called or to the curator destination, and it's the secondary address being applied. Now I can take that file and if I copy it and move it over to this WC agents directory. Now I've already done that behind the scene and I've already added this update add secondary destination. If we take a look into that, if we open it up, it's the same thing. So I have that script. And if we go over and change that to add secondary destination, and let's give that a save. Okay, so add secondary destination, just making sure I got the name right. We go back over PowerShell ICE and run that command. We can go over here and let's take a look at this patch directory. And we can see that we have a new patch directory here called the add secondary destination. So just like that, we've gone in, we've added Sysmon, and we've added a secondary destination to our remote agents, all just using PowerShell.